Well, I live in St. Munchen Street. You live? I live in and they, uh, we call it Kings Island. It's, it's, it's Christmas, just a week after Christmas, we had a bit of a pre warning if you want to look at it that way. 3rd of January, wasn't it? 3rd of January, and uh, the water had came up a little bit higher than it would have came in the, in the previous winters, or the mm. floating, floating seasons around February or March. If you want to call it? No, we call it floating season. Yeah. But uh, high tide. High tides generally start on 1st of March, and that's yeah. when you do get floods. But the floods, historically, only came to the, to the shrine and the, shra and the shops. Never came up around this particular site, or never mm. as bad as the scene below in St Mary's Park. But really. never entered our houses. Now, I've lived in St Mary's Park since I was born, and I'm 48. Yeah. Now, where I come from, my parents owned the house before me, and their, my mother's parents owned it before, so no one else ever lived there. And as far back as I can remember, never ever do we have a flood into the houses. They lost all, everyone lost their, 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 their white goods, if you want to call them, you know, like their refrigerators, their freezers, their tumble dryers, their washing machines, anything they had in the utility room, anything that you were using, your basic common day stuff. Sorry. Some of us lost fires, which built in gas fires that we yeah. had. All the carpets, wooden floors, some of the tiling had to come up in some of the, some of the rooms, mm -hmm. and all the walls were damaged up to about three feet. If they were dry lined, they'd have to be cut out. Sorry. Some of the houses down here have a downstairs bedroom, so you lost the bedroom furniture in that downstairs bedroom as well, didn't you, if you had the downstairs bedroom, you know? Yeah. Like in St Mary's Park here, you know, a lot of the houses have one the one room downstairs which they use as a bedroom, you know? Yeah. yeah. And so on the basis on the Saturday, everyone, all the services were around like headless chickens. Mm. And on the Sunday and the Monday, most of the local people helped got involved, community spirit, like a, the only way I could describe it is a war, and a reaction to a war, mm. which meant, what I did like about it, the only good to my book came out of it was, a lot of people got to know each other that didn't really know each other. Like we, we done a lot of volunteering for two weeks after the flood as well, mm. now we'll say, myself and Ray would have been involved with going around to people's houses, giving them out stuff, and yeah. you know, there was about 20 of the people, local people from the area, even though we had floods ourselves. We yeah. cleared out our own yeah. houses and what we could do for other people, we had doubt in that as well. Like. And everyone just pulled together. Everyone pulled together. together. Right, yeah. That's all you could do is pull together. Like. Now, I have to back one or two people mm -hmm. that were saying that the likes of the Marine Rescue and, oh, yeah. and the Fire Brigade didn't come here if you wanted to. That's a bare face line. Because I wasn't even in the area, I was going to work. Mm -hmm. When I came home from work at five past eight, now I went to I only work an hour and a half of a Saturday morning, and I went to work and when I came home at five past eight, I couldn't get in. I actually had mm. to stay two days out of Spirits Park, I couldn't get it back into my own home. And when I got out, yeah. my grandchild and her mother out, they brought her out in the boat. So when I came at five past eight, the fire brigade and I were all there. Monday, the start of a Monday afternoon, there's a, there's a corporation workers, or kind of scheme workers. From the, from the Monday to mm. the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and up to the Friday, they were emptying all the houses, helping all the people, going in, taking out stuff and the beds and the, the furniture. A lot, of people, a lot of people yeah, were very distraught yeah. throwing out their worldly belongings, but there was a recommendation from the council that they had to throw them out. Just because of flood water. But in fairness to the council, the corporation, the local government, do I want to talk, they moved in and because the, the following week they sent down an um, electrician and a gas fitter to double check the house before we moved back in. So in fairness, they didn't sure do that. And there was a lady over that was giving out emergency funding, which was only about 100 euros per person at the time. But the only criticism I have is that people, people that are not used to getting welfare or anything like that would not have been familiar with that particular setup. But in fairness, she went to every house about the fifth or sixth day to explain that to people. But I believe now that the government have granted aid to the people in private houses that have no insurance. The rental accommodation, obviously, they would be covered anyway. They were going to be looked after. Yeah. There was never a fear. But the problem as it stands now is the people that have insurance have not got any help from the government but they're at this point haggling with their insurance companies. Mm. And they don't know if the, I don't know, the gap in the draw, or the draft fall of what they receive, well, they're going to get that off the government. That's exactly what's happening at this point in time. Mm. And how have things been with insurance companies? Have they been? Even the house we're in, the occupants of this house mm. have paid their insurance. But having said that, they didn't realise that they weren't protective or, or including no certain certain aspects of insurance, yeah. which hasn't been explained to. But they're very quick to take your money. But there's no the explanatory side of it is doesn't come into it unless something happens. Yeah. And I felt that they should have, under the circumstances, regardless whether you had flood cover or not, the fact that people had insurance, they should have just, you know, a grazio, a grazio payment or a 
just waver yeah. that away and say, look, under the circumstances, it's a one-off. We look yeah. after it. No, they they are they're exceptions. Very hard. No, they made no exceptions. They made no exceptions. Mm. And uh, and house insurance is pretty pretty expensive this day and age, mm. which the bitterness is creeping in now because people that had insurance are saying they're better off if they never had insurance because. Of the flooding wasn't entirely just an act of nature. There was other things. The river has been moved, and things have been done that would affect floodplains and things like that. But we still haven't even been explained what happened. Yeah. So now we don't know what actually happened. Because, I mean, as I said, we've been living here down under all our lives, and it never happened before. And all of a sudden, we've three feet of water inside of our houses. And no one has still explained to us what caused that. Hmm. But there is, there is, uh, there has been, you see, you have to remember where we're from. It's a very historical part of Limerick. A state and tradition of fishermen. And they know what the tides. It's simple as that. It's no point in saying, I mean, everyone is an expert in what they do in life. And, a lot of these fellas have inherited the fishing, fishing ideas and basics from their parents, previous parents. They all lived on boats all summer. We had such fantastic summers all through the years. They lived on, on the river. They can swim and they can fish. And they have, they have said to me, stated quite categorically, that it was damn water, which is in, above in the Yarn of Crusher, ESB. Mm -hmm. And the water was not even dirty to come into their house that morning. We got the top of it. See, the tide was due to go back out at five past seven. As it, it, it goes out as quick as it comes in, mm -hmm. I to believe. So as it, as it went to go out, there was a massive surge of water came from somewhere to hold it and force it back in. So the only way I can explain it is just put a glass of water into the sink and keep topping it up and it just tilts over. And that's exactly what happened. Because you have to bear in mind the house is directly across from the, the wall, the river wall. Although they did get flood damage and they did get damage. It didn't, it, it, that was a tide that went, went through their houses. It didn't. It was so tilted that it actually went around and forceful that it actually went around it like a bend, mm. like a, a race and car going around the bend. And it went straight down a narrow street and all the way down towards the main street and, and just that's what happened. Whereas the, the theory they're saying, oh, it had been an enormous high tide or a flood from the river, it just went over the wall and straight in. I, I said I'm, I'm, I'm record, and you we were in the railroad, local radio on record saying, oh, I hope it was a man made error because we don't want it to happen again. But that, like, we're not in a position now to be given out of them anyway. Yeah. We just, want, we just want help and just want to get back to normal. Yeah, we know to get back to normal. Because even going, going around the area now, is, isn't ah, it? It's, 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 it's gone. The atmosphere is gone. The whole place doesn't even look the no. same anymore. Yeah. And you're afraid to crack a joke with someone now, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. even my own, even my own sense of humour, I've lost it. Mm -hmm. I had an open, Everyone I had a bit of a sense of humour. It seems that the way it has gone. Yeah. I mean, I walked mm -hmm. hard on when I put my house around me. Now, this present moment went into my house, you think we had nothing. You think we were living... That's in, the problem. It's like we were living when our parents lived yeah. 40, 50 years ago. Mm. You know, we shouldn't have to go back living like that, but that's the way it's going. So I wasn't going to go down that road, so I tried to save everything. But I'm being told by one person I've done wrong, because now the furniture I'm using in my house is contaminated. But at the same rate, I'm not going to throw the tree piece that I paid two and a half thousand euros for when I had money. I don't mm. have that money now, but they're only going to give me 700. You won't get it decent treaties for 700 you can get an armchair now for 700 yeah. you know so i mean i'm not i saved them but then when i went over for help towards mm. the house i got 100 euro off of the clinic the monday after the, the, emergency, happened, the, the emergency, emergency funding emergency. and i haven't got a penny since now they're telling me that i won't be getting whereas there's checks going house to house now for two and a half thousand seventeen hundred three thousand all depending different houses got different amounts of money mm. i can get that size off of anybody only that hundred euro and they're telling me now I won't be getting anything for my floors because the corporation are going to be coming in putting down the flooring. Jesus. Now, but they're going to be putting down the cheapest the laminate flooring you can get basic. down on your floor. That I mean, I had wood block flooring that I had to trump. See, you know what I mean? I know, because when people lost their possessions, i.e., whether the, the, the insurance or the corporation, we're not going to put them back in what you had in there. You could have had a, a mahogany floor in there, they're giving you a basic floor, and it's not the same. You know, the feeling is gone. Your, 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 your home that you've lived in and built up over a number of years. Because it was character. Yeah. All character in these houses. And I wouldn't cut anyone down, but anyone that has bought a house recently and have been in them, and they have no private room at the side. Like the two doors gone out. No, there's character in all those houses on there. And that has been taken away from us as well. And also a sense that you paid into the system. Correct. For years. Yeah. And we and never got anything out of the state. We worked. Everyone was worked. Yeah. You know, you have probably 50% are not working down St Mary's Park through no fault of their own. 
But there is people that have never worked, probably th through an illness, which is which is which is which is true. But they ha they're on a different they're on a different scale. So you have three categories of people down there. But when it came to the flood situation, and that's what we asked to go and we pleaded them, everyone to be treated the same. Now in fairness, mm -hmm. Minister Broughton turned around and said, anyone earning more than seventy thousand. Now there's no one earning seventy thousand and say even even in, the, in Dublin four at the moment. What I'm saying to you is they should have turned around and said, look, we treat everyone the same. There was a victim of the flood, this and all that. So that's just that's something that we don't think about when we see someone being flooded on TV. Never realised that now until it, until it happened. We shouldn't have had to go the way we went either, Ray. No. I mean, they're educated people. And I said that to that Joan Bruton, yeah. lady that came to the, she came to the centre one day. And I asked her straight out, I said, I said, your staff are educated. I said, they're grown adults. I said, why do we have to go out there like as if we're begging? Yeah. I said, why can't they? They know they have from what number to what number on each street that the water got into the houses. Come to the houses, come in and talk to us. You know, and that's the way the, the government should have treated us. The very same way. Not have us gone to them like as if we're begging. They could have came to our houses. It's the same thing as us going to them. They could have done ten houses a day. Yeah, in know? hindsight, they should, they should have been... Uh, they should be making it... There should be, there should be an organisation there for anything like that. Because mm. I, I actually said one thing ago, I said, if, we, if it was a war tomorrow, we're not prepared. In any shape. And the Red Cross were the same now, Ray, weren't they? You filled in one page of the farm, you handed it into Red Cross, and they ring you and came to your home. Yes. But the clinic, it was like... Yeah, but the Red Cross now was a voluntary mm. organisation. And they were so very you nice. With the uh, one sheet of paper, you put your name, what damage was on your house, and you're, you're signed it. But and they came and looked at the house. They came to your house, took a few photos, you signed another farm, and they decided what they could give you. Mm. But the clinic didn't do that. You had about ten pages of a farm no. to fill in. You're... Didn't really want to know what colour under were you, Daniel? And didn't that they come to you at to them didn't still begging? They should have come to us. I don't care what anyone says. They should have. They could have took ten hours a day and done ten yeah, hours. Yeah, we said that. Day. The minute I went over there, right, and that was one of the first over there just to find out for the people that didn't know. And the minute she mentioned filling the means tested, I said, look, it's not pointing to me because I'm working. I knew straight away. When you hear that word means tested, now everyone is familiar with that. But if it's students, school boys, everyone's means tested. And the minute it mentioned, I just said, look. Don't get me wrong, I said, Where, how are you means tested when flood water comes in your, in, in your front door at five past seven of a Saturday morning, the first of, first of, first of February, and you don't forward to Saturday afternoon after whatever, whatever people do. Mm. And you're means tested, you said, I'm going to do my job. See, if I, if I, if I had a euro for every time I heard that, I'm going to do my job. So there was no one there to grab the bull by the horn and say, look, this is a flood, this is a, a 999 situation. We need to bring a, a flood, flood group. There should be an organisation. They could pull up in mobile trucks and vans. They could have commandeered the boat, the soccer club instead of us. They could have been in their professional people. Mm -hmm. And went straight into the house and look, d get that on data, flooded, flooded, flooded. All the 22 holes in the street were flooded. But we, there was only 10 flooded on, on street two. And they've got that straight away from, from the Saturday or Sunday. So there should be an organisation set up. And we gave it to them, we, 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 them we as the, the community gave them from what number of what house to what number of the house. On each street, mm. the water got into and yet they still give checks out to people that know what got into Yeah, it was very low. This is where we couldn't get, I couldn't come to grips with. I was driving people for the whole day one day out to Belenti Clinic, and I was seeing who was getting the channel. I was getting violent yeah. because the people that I was driving out were genuine cases and couldn't get it. They were coming out without it. Without it. But there's two ways of looking at that then. I mean, it, if it's if it, if, it, if, if, if the system is open for abuse, well then... You don't blame the people, yeah. number one. I don't blame the people at all. And I don't care about, I'm not judging or criticising anyone, right? Because if it goes public, right? Mm. But what I'm saying is, if the system is open to be abused, well, that's the government's fault again. And it, there's enough legislation, there's enough money there for them to put a, a couple of guys in to make sure that it's not abused. Not abused. Right? And all they had to do was, okay, one, two, three, four, ten, up to ten, the house were flooded. We're giving you an allocation of two, two or three thousand per house. There's a cheque, because we know we can't put the furniture back that she had. No, if Anthony gets a cheque for two thousand and he wants to go up to the pub and drink it, but at least it's marked off he got the cheque. That's his problem. But then you have the genuine guy that would take three or four thousand and try and get the house back to the way he had it. Mm -hmm. And that's, now this is all in the hindsight. We all learned after a month and a half we picked this up. But if we can help anyone else down the road now, I, in fact, I said it on the radio, we, uh, obviously Limerick and the Paris will take the first hit, we've taken the hit. So I'd like it to prevent other people, mm. other, in, 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 in anywhere in the country. Mm. I don't want them to see what, what we went through.
We have a lot to be thankful for at the same time. No, no one was no killed. Hurt. No, well, one was was killed. Only one it happened on a Saturday morning where no kids had school. Because if that was a school morning, the kids would be washed away. Because they would have been mm. heading to school at that hour of the morning. So we're, we're, we're very lucky in some yeah, sense, you know, no one does. that nobody That's got badly hurt, did you know?